Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Italian bolt action army update. Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, some artillery pieces. Um, sorry about the slightly extra long delay on this video um, compared to my others that seem to come out almost weekly. Um, for some reason the second item in this video uh, did take me a little bit longer than uh, than I wanted it to, uh, plus uh, I had a sort of, uh, uh, I was kind of ill in between as well, which kind of didn't exactly help my painting schedule. So up here first, um, we have the um, medium mortar. Um, this, uh, the actual uh, one that the Italians used, um, the, mor the mor Mortio de 8114 or Modelo 35 uh, 81 millimeter mortar and uh, if you've watched my little um, painting video that I did um, you'll recognize uh, the guy carrying the ammo case as the figure that I um, portrayed in my uh, paint, actual painting video so you can see that um, in slightly better light because that was a little bit in the dark um, the painting scheme uh, does turn out pretty cool miniatures um, and you know, these three guys turned out really cool you can see they got their uh, um, as opposed to some other sort of heavier artillery pieces these guys are in full kit because they're maybe a little bit closer to the front line uh, they've all got their full packs and this particular guy here has got an, his entrenching tool on. I don't think anyone else has. No. Um, this uh, pouch here, um, I can't remember if I've told you, but I did actually find out that this is actually a gas mask pouch. Um, I had a suspicion that it was, and I went and checked, and it was. Um, this guy has got a slightly bent rifle. There we go. Yes, so. Once again, uh, the desert base came out really cool. I was very happy with how it turned out. Um, you can see that I went for a little bit of a, a sort of a pathway coming off to the side of this particular uh, base, and I, I kind of like that. So a three-man team, and you can see um, another one of those uh, really nice little desert diorama pieces from Tajima.co.uk, and. Uh, as far as ranks go for these guys, uh, the highest rank in this team is uh, the um, the loader, who is uh, um, actually the loader stroke commander, so, and he's literally just a, a senior uh, private or a, a soldato salto, and. If you look on the bottom of the base here, um, we have all the. Um, I always give my guys uh, their rank, and I give them a randomly generated uh, Italian name from the, uh, an Italian random name generator that I found on the internet. So we have two soldatos and one soldato salto. And I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. I mean, a mortar is a very sort of generic and uh, uh, piece that you'll probably find in in every single bolt action army. Um, but I do actually quite like the way that this this one's been designed. Um, I think the the, the actual character figures. Uh, this is a warlord one, by the way. Um, character figures are, are, are really cool. I like the positions, and um, they it fits together really well. It's a, it's, a, it's a good set of models. Okay, so that is the 81 mil mortar, or the Modelo 35 medium mortar. Okay, next up, the big guns. Um, this is the uh, the Modelo. 14 
Here we go. Try and get it into shot. Here we go. So let me just zoom out a little bit. Here we go. Yeah, so this is, like I said, the Modelo 14. Um, medium howitzer, so it's a 105mm. Um, uh, according to Wikipedia, it's actually the 105... Uh, I can't quite pronounce it probably. I'm, I'm probably butcher it. It's OBC, OBS, uh, 10514, or actually the Modelo 18. So there, we, there we go. A little far away shot of it. Um, get you closer look. This is the model that took me a lot longer to uh, complete than I thought it was going to. Um, bring you in. Uh, I decided to go for a slightly smaller base than a lot of people seem to go for with their sort of big guns. Um, and I was think, kind of thinking of one um, maybe um, half the size of this bigger. Um, but then I kind of thought, well, wait a second. Um, if I had the base that big, then I'd need to put their backpacks and their rifles and um, the other bits of kit and uh, ammo boxes and, and, and spent casings and all that sort of stuff. And um, I haven't got any of that sort of stuff available. And uh, unlike some of the, um, the sort of uh, uh, more well-known armies like the sort of Germans or Americans or the British um, that aren't actually plastic kits, um, you don't get that sort of extra equipment that you would get um, off of the plastic soldier sprue so you wouldn't have extra backpacks, extra um, you know, uh, unworn helmets, etc, etc um, and rifles to stack up and all that sort of gear. So I decided to go for a slightly smaller base and it's basically what I need to fit on the base but cut everything else off. So in the end of the day it did exactly the job that I wanted it to do. Um, you can see the gun, it's, uh, it was actually pretty simple to put together. Um, I've had a lot of trouble before trying to fit together uh, Warlord guns, um, specifically the uh, US Marine Corps 37mm. I, uh, that was, uh, you know, I had a real lot of trouble trying to fit that together. But this went together really easy. Um, again, there was sort of no instructions included and, um, you know, Basically, with Warlord stuff, you have to basically look online to try and find um, sometimes how to put things together. But this was very, very straightforward. Um, it's basically a one, two, three, four, five piece kit. The body um, slide, you basically put the gun on the carriage, slide the, the guard over the carriage, and then it slides um, over the actual... Um, the carriage part and uh, and there's sort of like some lugs at the bottom there that it kind of sits on and then you just basically stick the wheels on the axles and it's done it's, it's a very very simple model to put together um, painting wise uh, as simple as it looks um, in sort of um, more or less uh, a straight up does it painting scheme it did take me a little bit longer to paint than I thought it would um, and obviously the miniatures they didn't the miniatures didn't take too too long, um, but like I said, I was kind of ill in between it, and, and that kind of put three or four days on, onto the total sort of finishing time. And you can see that um, somehow I managed to uh, get get it nicely sort of weathered um, and, and kind of nicely sort of um, toned toned up. Um, originally, I, I kind of went for a um, a green ochre type of desert scheme um, but I thought it looked a bit too stark so I kind of lightened it down a little bit more towards um, a sort of Africa core um, sort of tone um, Africa, Africa core tank crew highlight tone um, but it ended up being a kind of a, a slight mixture between the two um, and with some desert pigment and powder at the end um, it really did turn out uh, looking nice. Um, it's got these 
big beefy tyres um, and uh, there's the sort of the breech end of it you can see sort of crew wise we have a did I write the crew yes this I, I have actually written the crew the, the ranks on the bottom but I haven't generated their names yet so we have a teniente or a lieutenant in command so that's that guy there with the sun hat let's give you a closer look at him yeah he turned out pretty cool looking very officer like it's a shame he didn't have a uh, uh, pistol holster actually that would have really finished him off decided to give him a slightly younger um, looking face um, you know sort of like a junior officer and his perhaps his first sort of posting of an artillery battery and it just so happens that this is the gun that he's assigned to where normally it might be something like a you know, like a sergeant or or a sort of a, a, a Italian wise or sort of higher ranked corporal um, going down the rest of the crew there we have a corporale maggiore um, which I believe is a senior corporal um, as the number one and a soldato celto as the number two with the, f the familiar red V and a normal soldato uh, at the end, so let me just give you a close look at these guys. So you can see that the uh, the number one has got uh, no belt kit on at all. He's got his jacket open, and you can see his sort of like his shirt underneath. Um, very easy to paint that guy. Uh, no no belting or webbing or anything to, to do with that. The fact the only strap he's got is his helmet strap. So yeah, he's he's a pretty cool figure though, all the same. Uh, next on to the uh, the number two. So let's swing it around. Uh, he's holding one of the uh, 105 shells. And again, he has got a open jacket, or a slightly open jacket, maybe with one or two buttons done up. And uh, again, has, has he got a belt on? No, he hasn't got a belt on. So there's another guy with that belt. So that's all kit that you'd need to somehow model if the base was a bit bigger. So, like I say, it was a, it was a good move for using a slightly smaller base. So that's the, um, I like this guy's face. And finally, the number three, uh, the Soldato. He has not got his jacket on at all, his uh, Sahariana. So he is literally just in his straight up shirt. And the only belt that he's got on is his trouser belt. And I'm trying to get a closer look at him. Has he got. No, he hasn't got a moustache. I think he's got a moustache. So again, another guy ready to pass the shell on. And again, sort of does it base wise. You can see it came out looking pretty cool. Another one of those Tajima little desert sprues in the uh, here, and a sort of a desert bush off to the side, and some little clumps of vegetation sort of uh, randomly spread around and you can see that I've kind of semi crushed that sort of plant down um, where the, the gun has popped recoiled back over it and a little clump there just off to the side of the tyre yeah pretty pretty pleased this is the first actual sort of heavy heavier than a 37mm anti-tank gun artillery piece of that I've ever done um, and I was, and I am pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, I think it uh, came out really well. And uh, the more I kind of look at it, the more happy I am about the base size choice as well. Um, so that is the um, what Warlord call Modelo 14, and what Wikipedia calls the Modelo 18. So I'm not really too sure which one to believe. Um, 105 medium howitzer for the Italian army. So that is the end of this update. So let's bring the mortar team back in. Put them there. So thank you for joining me on this little uh, artillery based update. Um, we are, or I am getting extremely close to finishing them now. I literally have a infantry unit and a Sultan anti-tank gun team to do. 
and the next update will probably include uh, those two items um, and um, at the end when I finish them all I will do the classic full army update where I'll just you know sit down and just go through the whole army um, so if you don't feel like sitting down and watching the individual videos um, I'll actually take you through the whole army step by step um, and uh, you know I'll show you their names and their ranks and all that sort of extra stuff that I may not talk about in, in the main video um, and uh, you know it, it will be different from the, from the originals so it's still worth a watch actually uh, you know sometimes go back and, and, and watch the uh, the big army updates myself um, it's just you know if you're bored for sort of 25 um, this is a slightly smaller army so I'm not sure if it'll take sort of the, the normal sort of 25 30 minutes that, that my other bigger armies took but um, it, chances are, obviously, it's going to be longer than, than a basic video. So, uh, like if you liked, uh, subscribe, or think about subscribing if you haven't, because uh, it's an easy way of getting um, a update on when I release new videos. Um, feel free to comment, um, and uh, I'll catch you later.